Now we are going to solve our problem number 8 on maximum power transfer theorem and this problem is based on maximum power transfer when we have an AC circuit. So let us read the problem now. In the circuit shown below, this circuit, the value of capacitor C required for maximum power to be transferred to the load is. Now when you observe the given network, you will find the inductor the resistor and the capacitor together are forming the load of this network and we need to find value of capacitor C for the maximum average power transfer to the load of this network. We have four options and we need to choose one correct option. So let us move on to our solution. We know the condition for maximum power transfer when we have both RL and XL variable in the load impedance. When you find out the load impedance of this load ZL, you will have RL plus JXL. And in this problem, RL is variable and also XL is variable. And when this is the scenario, we know that maximum power will be transferred to the load which is ZL when ZL, the load impedance, is equal to the complex conjugate of the Thevenin's impedance. Now when you find out Thevenin's impedance of this network, you will find it is equal to 0 0.5 ohm. Z th equal to 0 0.5 ohm and this means zth is purely resistive and therefore rth is equal to 0 0.5 ohm and xth is equal to 0 and i hope you remember how to find out zth to find out zth you need to open circuit the load and you need to short circuit this source then you have the resistance between the two terminals from this side equal to 0 0.5 ohm now moving back to our condition for maximum power transfer from this condition we will have rl equal to rth and rth is equal to 0 0.5 ohm so rl is also equal to 0 0.5 ohm for maximum power transfer and XL should be equal to negative of XTH. XTH is equal to 0 and therefore XL should also be equal to 0 ohm for maximum power transfer. Now understand the approach to find out capacitance C. We will find out ZL. We will find out ZL from this combination and in that we will have C and C will be present in the real part of ZL and also in the imaginary part of ZL and the real part of ZL is equal to 0 0.5 ohm and the imaginary part of ZL is equal to 0 ohm now out of these two conditions we will take one condition and we will find out C so let us move on to the calculation of ZL ZL is equal the inductor in series with the resistor in parallel with the capacitor and before we start our calculation we will write inductor and capacitor in frequency domain for inductor we will have j omega l we are not writing value of l at the moment for capacitor we will have negative of j over omega c negative of j over omega c so ZL will be equal to J omega L plus 1 in parallel with negative of J over omega C. Moving on to the next step, we will have ZL equal to J omega L plus minus J over omega C divided by 1 minus J over omega C. Now to simplify this, we will perform the rationalization and we know in rationalization we will multiply the numerator and the denominator by the denominator with positive sign here. 
So this is how it will look like. Let us now perform the multiplication. We will have ZL equal to J omega L plus we will have minus J over omega C plus 1 over omega squared multiplied by C squared and in the denominator we will have 1 plus 1 over omega squared multiplied to C squared. Now we are interested in finding out the real part and the imaginary part and when you look at what we have calculated you will find this is having J this means it is imaginary and this is also having J this means it is imaginary but this one here 1 divided by omega square c square is not having j so this one here is real so the real part will be this divided by this let me write it in the form it is more understandable and this is our real part the real part of zl which is rl is equal to 1 divided by omega square c square divided by 1 plus 1 over omega square c square and this should be equal to 0 0.5 ohm or I can write 1 divided by 2. Now in this we have two unknowns omega and c. Omega we can have from here when you compare this with vm sine omega t you will find omega is 100 and therefore we can find out c very easily simplifying this we will have 1 divided by omega squared c squared plus 1 equal to 1 divided by 2 from here we will have omega squared c squared plus 1 equal to 2 or we can write omega squared c squared is equal to 1 and therefore c squared will be equal to 1 divided by omega squared or we can say that the capacitance value is equal to 1 over omega omega is equal to 100 so c will be equal to 1 divided by 100 and the unit will be farad or we can say C is equal to 0 0.01 farad or we can say that C is equal to 10 milli farad. Now keep this value in your mind. We will move on to the options we have and you can see option D is the correct option. So this is all for this question. And to find out this answer, we have equated the real part of ZL to 1 over 2 and not the imaginary part to 0 because calculation is simple in this case. So this is all for this lecture. I will end it here. See you in the next one.